Second quarterfinal of the day here at the 2024 GNAC Championships. Alaska Anchorage took down Seattle Pacific 79-57 in game number one earlier this afternoon. And now we see the number four ranked Central Washington Wildcats are hosts this weekend, taking on the number five Red Leafs of Simon Fraser University. Thank you for joining us for this 215 tip-off. It'll be the second and the final game of the women's session. And then later this evening, we'll have the men's GNAC championships get going. St. Martin's and Anchorage at 515 and then 730. We got Central Washington and Seattle Pacific. Taking a look at the starting lineups here for game number two. Going to be a key piece missing for Simon Fraser as they put Killens, Cutler, Lukes, Delay, and Sophia Wisotsky on the floor. They will be missing their first team guard in Jessica Wisotsky here for this game. On the other side, Central Washington, Coronado, Huerta, Sims, Kai, and Blodgett, the five to start for the Wildcats. This is the matchup that we have been looking forward to here today as this has been a tightly contested uh, season series and now a chance for these two teams to battle it out in the four versus the five matchup in the quarters. For Central Washington, ninth straight appearance in the GNAC championships. They had not made the tourney until 2015 and then since then they haven't missed. On the other side for Simon Frazier, an old star award of the championships. 13 straight appearances. But they are looking for their first win in the postseason since 2016. They've got six straight GNAC losses that they are looking to overcome. Well, Sean Wally, as we get into this one, keys to a W for either side. For Central, it's going to be interesting to see how much of a home, home court advantage there is. It's always great when you host to get your teams in the dance and they've done that. So we will see both the women's team and the men later on tonight. So we've got a decent student section here for this afternoon's game. Absolutely. So we'll see how big of a piece that is. Yeah, yeah it was sparse crowd for game number one, but uh, Central Washington handed out some student tickets and we've got a couple hundred uh, Central Washington students on hand as we get going. It's going to be Cutler to tip it back, but Capri Sims beats her out, and Wildcats with possession as we get going. Central Washington, the number four seed, Simon Frazier, the number five. Winner of this goes on to face Montana State Billings, the overall number one seed in the tournament. Cut from Capri Sims, who puts it up and in. Wildcats with the first lead. So they get a bucket on their first trip down the floor. Quick pace the other side. Luke's can't get it to go. Central Washington gets it back. Two to watch in this one for the Wildcats. Sonny Huerta, Asher Kai, pair of first team guards for the Wildcats first team all conference, that is. We get our first whistle. Driving on the right side was Asher Kai, and she's going to go to the line. Great pace to this early, less than a minute gone by, and a lot of action. These teams are ready. Yeah, yeah. A lot of tempo here to start. Kai misses the first. Asher Kai, a sophomore, first team all conference this year, was freshman of the year last year in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, averaging 20 points a game. She leads the GNAC in scoring this season. Can't get either of her free throws to go. Remains a 2 0 central lead. Here's a dump underneath. Cutler gets it to go. Nice pass inside from Grace Killens. Central won both meetings in the regular season. Drive on the left side. Won't go for Sonny Huerta. Simon Frazier looking for an early lead would be their first of the ball game. And a pass. Looked like it was a little bit unexpected there from Cutler. Goes through her hands and out of bounds. Turnover for the Red Leafs. Nice to see the student section standing. Might be difficult to see on the broadcast because they're directly under the camera. Driving to the left block. And it looked like Kai was gonna draw another foul, but a turnover as we're going the other way. 
Too many steps in the lane. After quick scores, now we got a little turnover happy on both sides. Bringing it up, that's Rachel Luke stumps it to the right side. As we mentioned, the Wazowski sisters missing half of that crew as Jessica not in the game. Sophia getting the start. Jessica hurt her ACL earlier this season. That's a big miss for Simon Fraser. She was a first teamer and won't get to finish out her senior year healthy, unfortunately. 17 footer. Huerta can't get it to go. Moving in transition. Quick layup from the right side. No good by Cutler. Simon Frazier early on really pushing that tempo. Killens to Cutler underneath. Hasn't worked out so far. Just a bucket aside. We're two and a half minutes into this game. Here's Sims in the corner. Tries to drive baseline. Gets underneath her defender and she gets it to go. Thought she might take the three. She was wide open, but... Maybe a smarter choice, baseline drive. Yeah, I think Gemma Culler thought she was going to take the three as well, and that allowed her to get position on the right block. I see a foul called on Sonny Huerta. That'll be her first. Yeah, both these teams more than happy to move quickly. Has not turned into you know, a huge offensive outpouring yet, but it's going to be a high-tempo ball game, it looks like. Killens drives to her right. Off balance layup. Off the side of the glass. Had a double team on her. Tried to get it off. Didn't turn into much. Now driving the other way is Coronado. She loses it. So another turnover for the Wildcats. And continuing to run the transition offense. They do finally find Cutler inside. And it's 4-4. Good ball movement by both teams. Just a little more execution by the Red Leafs. Been a huge emphasis so far from Simon Frazier on finding Cutler cutting in transition. That three no good from Kai. Off balance layup on the right side. Can't go. Can't go. Shot selection's been a little iffy from the Red Leafs. Forcing a couple of layups. And we're going to see an offensive foul called. Looks like that one's going against Capri Sims on a moving screen. And we're gonna see our first substitutes of the game for the Wildcats. And for the first time, Malia Smith and Kyra Marsh. Only two players have scored, one for each team. They both have four points. Here's a dump underneath. Doesn't go, but a foul call. Gemma Cutler will be heading to the line as that is quickly a second foul on Sims. And she's just picked up a foul on each of the last two possessions. The GNAC, GNAC championships here at Nicholson Arena for the first time in their history as Central Washington hosting both their men's and women's squads have managed to make the postseason. Women's sides, just a couple years removed from their first postseason title. They beat Western Washington back in 2022 for the GNAC title. Simon Frazier in search of their first. Six minutes remaining here in quarter number one, six to four, Simon Frazier. An early lead over Central Washington. Driving to the left, Marsh dumps it outside. Huerta bounces off. She's still looking for her first points. Sunshine, a big key for Central in this tournament. Here's Merlane Shelby. Tries to drive baseline, has to pop it back out. Now moving to the left, gets it to go. Sophia Wasatsky. Wasatsky had a great drive left side of the lane, going strong with the scoop off glass. First team all conference guard gets her first points. She leads the team in scoring, averaging more than 17 per game this season. Kai loses balance on the right side, has to dump it back out. Huerta gets in trouble. 
Gets tied up and a jump ball is called. Possession arrow belongs to the Red Leafs. Nice hands by Wysotsky there. Nearly getting the steal. It's nope. just as effective because the jump ball gives them the ball anyway. All right, turnover's been an issue here early on for Central Washington. That's number four for the Wildcats. Just one committed so far by the Red Leafs, who currently hold an 8-4 lead early on in these quarterfinals. Rebound belongs to Shelby Blodgett after the miss by Wasatsky. Driving right side. No good by Huerta, but the putback by Blodgett will go. Richard sophomore out of Plattsgany, Oregon. Little three-point look and faking a drive to the left. That won't go. Here come the Wildcats in transition. Oh, chance to find Marsh underneath is blocked out of bounds. And that will send us into our first timeout. 4.16 left in the first quarter. Simon Fraser 8, Central Washington 6, here on GNAC TV. Eight six, the lead for the Red Leafs. Four sixteen left in the first quarter. This is the second and final quarterfinal of the day on the women's side of the GNAC Championships. Winner here on to face MSUB tomorrow afternoon. And they're in the building watching, observing, taking notes for tomorrow. As is the second game they've been here for. Central Washington looking to, looking to get it back to even. Count the bucket in the foul. Kyra Marsh gets it to go. And Central Washington a free throw away from reclaiming the lead. I was going to ask where the whistle was. It was late, but they got the foul that was fairly obvious, at least to my eyes. What a great job inside by Marsh going strong, getting the contact, and we got a tie ball game. That, that's a tough one to get to go to. That, that was a, a really great get to get those two points and go for the end one. She converts it. Central Washington back up by a point, 9-8 our score. Simon Frazier has had their offense flow through Gemma Cutler here early. Coming out of the timeout, however, she is not on the floor, so we'll see who will take over the offensive workload. There's a give and go. But there was a travel, wow. That was Caitlin Tedeweo on the left side. Couldn't get it to go. A little bit of... Noise from the crowd is, yeah, they were looking for steps there as well. Kai on the outside. She has been quiet so far, has not scored, given up a couple of turnovers. Three pointer from the angle, that'll go. Annalie Coronado. All of a sudden, four point game, largest lead yet for Central Washington. Coronado averaging 6.2 on the season. That's the first three pointer we have seen in this game. Offense starting to pick up. It was a pretty quiet start to this one. Baseline ref looking for some help, and we're going the other way. Central Washington commits their fifth turnover. So that'll be something that they'll have to talk about at the end of this quarter. Taking a little bit better care of the basketball. Has not hurt them too much yet. They got a two-point lead, 
but giving up opportunities on trips down the floor. Er early shooting advantage going to Central Washington. Still not shooting well, but the last time out they shot 37.5% to 27.3 for the Red Leafs. 12-10 our score, Wildcats with the advantage. Trying to get a first round win here at home as Cutler is going to draw the foul underneath. Student section doesn't like the call, of course, because it goes against the Wildcats. I'm not sure I don't disagree with them. Uh, the defender was straight up and down. What, what more are they supposed to do? Just get out of the way? Pretty rowdy uh, student section here for 2 o'clock on a Thursday. They came ready to support their squad. First one does not go for Cutler. So far in this game, Gemma Cutler, six points. She's got a couple of boards. And she goes over two at the line. However, knocked out of bounds. Two Wildcats fighting over the rebound. They both lose it, so SFU will maintain possession. Unforced errors. Two teammates. That's all about communication there. Someone's just got to take the lead and grab that basketball. Back into the game is Shelby Blodgett. For Central Washington. Two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. 12-10 our ball game. Real tough layup on the right side. Gardner does not get it to go, and we're going to see a foul called on Simon Frazier. That one goes against Cutler. Second foul for Gemma Cutler. I think we're going to be seeing her come out as Ryland Quirk comes into the game for Armin Delay back in as well for the Red Leafs. Simon Frazier been on quite a run here at the end of this season. They've won eight of their last ten entering the GNAC championships. That included a win to finish off the regular season. 17-13, their overall record on the year. Kai, little 13-footer, can't get it to go. She is still scoreless in this game, and jump ball is going to be called. Which is awfully unusual, considering she's averaging 20. Not the only tops in the conference, but one of the top scorers in all of Division II college basketball. She is 10th in Division II in scoring coming into this game, averaging 20 a game. She put up a season-high 30 points a little over a month ago against Northwest Nazarene. But it's been a goose egg so far tonight for the sophomore Asher Kai. Central Washington's going to get a second chance at it. Coronado gets through the left side and she gets it to go. Red Leafs bench wanted a double dribble, didn't get it. We've seen a couple of really nice moves from Annalie Coronado so far in this game as she's got five. Jumper will not go for Dulé and we're going to see a foul called underneath and we're sending this the other way fouls on Ryland Quirk we've seen a couple forearm pushes on both ends not called early in this one officials I guess choosing to let them play yeah you know if the continuity is going to be there the consistency of it they're going to allow the physicality then by all means 14-10 our score Wildcats on top by a couple of buckets there's a foul on the baseline as Marsh was driving to her left. It's going to get called on McKenna Gardner, the junior guard out of Langley, British Columbia. Looking up and down the Simon Fraser roster, they have two kids out of the United States, it looks like. Kyra Stewart, Ryland Quirk, California and Oregon kids, respectively. And with the exception of Natalie Charity being out of England, the rest are from the Great White North. First free throw will not go for Kara Marsh. Marsh already has four on the afternoon. Her season average, 2.5. Off to a great start then. 15-10 our score. Minute and a half left in the first quarter. Uh, it's going to stay here. Bruce Langford, head coach for Simon Fraser, just it is picked Simon up. Simon Fraser, isn't it? At this point, 23, 23 seasons in, yeah. 
and just picked up win number 500 in their last game of the regular season. So a big congratulations to him. Give and go on the drive. McKenna Gardner gets it to go. What a pass on the baseline, finding Gardner slashing to the basket. Getting underneath. Huerta won't get it. Huerta and Kai, this has been the biggest surprise of this game. They've combined for zero points so far. As there's a block, it looked like that was Coronado that got a piece of it. And the fact that the Wildcats are in the lead, yeah. those two not scoring, it's got to be amazing news for Randy Richardson Thornley. Yeah, you you go to before this game and you tell you tell Randy you're going to get zero out of those two combined and you're going to have a three-point lead under a minute left in the first quarter. Shocked. Certainly shocked because they, they have accounted for more than half of this team scoring on any given night. And if they get going, it's got to be good news for the Wildcats. Central looking to expand their lead. Blodgett loses it out of bounds. Going to stay here. Last touch by the Red Leafs. And so Simon Frazier beat Western Washington 68-67 on senior night last week giving head coach Bruce Langford his 500th career win with the Red Leafs. 500 and 191. His overall record as a head coach, pretty outstanding marks for 23 seasons. Heading to the line looking for her first points. It's going to be Sunny Huerta. Two-time first-team all-conference guard. Marsh returns for the Wildcats. Not a bad idea by where to get her first points at the line. Might be that simple just to get her going. Huge shock here in this one to see nine and a half minutes tick away before Huerta or Kai score. But Huerta hits both of her free throws. 17 to 12, Central Washington leading. Shot clock turned off here at the end of the first quarter. Simon Fraser can get it back to a possession ball game. Gardner dribbling out the clock, hands it off to Killens. Five left in the quarter. Killens in the corner for three. She'll get it to go. And that'll put a cap on the first quarter. Simon Fraser gets a tray to bring it back to a two-point game as we head to quarter number two. Central Washington, 17. Simon Fraser, 15. Here on GNAC TV. Ready to go for quarter number two. Central Washington with a two-point lead, 17-15 over the Simon Fraser Red Leafs. This is the four versus the five seed Wildcats with the higher mark coming into the GNAC championships. Winner on to face number one, MSUB. As the Yellow Jackets, for the first time in program history, have capped both the women's and men's season with a regular season title at the same time. 
We're tied for the fourth time. 17-17, the score. Driving to the left side, knocked away. Wasatsky. It's going to be the last touch by Coronado. They say it's going to stay here. Shooting in that first quarter, only 30% for Simon Fraser, 42.9 for the host Wildcats. Now, looking at the stats, there hasn't been too much differential between these two teams. Neither side doing anything particularly better. Been a lot more efficient on shooting for the Wildcats. That's been the big one. Shot clock down to eight. That one falls into the backcourt. They're going to say last touched by defender, though, so no over and back. Out of bounds. I've not seen a point of possession yet. The entire student section pointing the way of the Wildcats. Officials conferring. Yeah, we have not seen a decision on which way this ball is going yet. The referee on the sideline where it happened asking for help on this one. So if Simon Frazier holds on to this, they're going to have four on the shot clock in their backcourt. And drunk ball's going to be called. You know what that tells you? They had no idea who it was out on. Yeah, you know, it'll happen from time to time, so we're just going to call it jump ball. Possession arrow is going to favor the Red Leafs here, it looks Randy like. Randy Richardson Thornley is up in arms. Yeah. And now it's central basketball. Now they're calling over and back, giving the ball to central because of that. To the delight did, of the student section. Did we go to a video replay on this? We just had a little conference over here at the middle. I think she talked to our score. Okay. It's the only thing I saw. Well, we get possession arrow, then we get it overturned. Regardless, Central Washington basketball with nine minutes left in the first half and a tie ball game. Open. Three pointer. Huerta. Just the second three pointer made in, the, made in this game by the Wildcats. Her first field goal. Now she's got five as she starts to get warmed up. That's all she needed was a free throw. Still yet to hear from Asher Kai. Been interesting how this has played out so far. Drive to the right side. Wasatsky loses it out of bounds. And it's going to be central basketball. Loving the pace and the energy on the floor. Not, not only the energy in the building, but. These two teams on the floor are going, getting after it. Yeah, this student section certainly feeding that. You know, you're able to take your, your tempo, your motivation, your energy on the floor to the next level when you've got a, a rowdy crowd. So that's certainly helping. Glad to see the Central Washington student section turning out for this ball game. Fade away from Huerta, leaves it a little bit short. Cutler has a rebound. If she hit that, look out. I think that one's going to hit off of the yes. knee of DeLay. Yeah, they're going to say it's Central Washington basketball. You can see it from here that it went off the Red Leafs, but Coach Bruce Langford for Simon Fraser wanted the foul, thought his player got hit on the arm. All of a sudden, a little momentum going the Wildcats' way. They look to expand on a 2017 advantage. Moving around a screen, Kai drives right, goes up with the right hand, gets it to go, wow. Tough layup, goes down. Asher Kai's first points, now 12 minutes into this one. Huerta and Kai, if they get going, this building will be uber excited. A little miscommunication there as Dulé was looking for Wisotsky coming around the screen, it left it behind her, tossed it out of bounds. Another turnover. Sixth in the first half for the Red Leafs. Simon Frazier scoreless for the last couple of minutes. Three pointer from Kai gets it. Safe to say she's finding her stroke. All of a sudden, an eight point lead for Central Washington 25 17. Cutler can't get it to go. Into the corner. That's going to be Simon Frazier basketball, so it stays here. 8 0 run for Central Washington is going to draw a Simon Frazier timeout. 
7.25 left in the first half. 25-17. Wildcats on top here on GNAC TV. Now this game was tied at 17-17 just two and a half minutes ago. Central Washington out to an 8-0 run to make it a 25-17 Wildcat lead. Simon Frazier trying to stop the bleeding. They have the ball coming out of the timeout. And Wasatsky's going to draw a foul. That gets called on Huerta. That's her second. That's one way to slow Sonny down is get her into foul trouble. That's going to bring her off the floor as Malia Smith will check in for. One of the most impressive things about the Central Washington team is you look up and down the roster, no seniors, two juniors, nine combined freshmen and sophomores. Very young Wildcat roster. So Coach Richardson Thornley should have a good squad for years to come. Now Simon Frazier as well, not that old of a team. Only a couple of seniors on the roster. A lot of youth to work with. Have a lot of experience coming back. That layup won't go as well. The drought continues for the Red Leafs. Central Washington looking to push this lead larger and larger. Coronado to the left. Wow, wide open was Blodgett and nobody saw her. Loses the dribble, tries to pass to the outside, tipped out by the Red Leafs. Red Leafs only one field goal in this quarter. They have not scored since there was over nine minutes left here in the second. Blodgett kicks it out to the outside. Smith can't get it to go, but Kai's there to clean it up. Great job by Kai recognizing that shot. Not close, yeah. right into her hands, put back good. Don't think that's how they drew it up, but it works out nonetheless. Ten-point ball game. Kai's got seven all of a sudden. Gonna stay here. That pass deflected out of bounds intended for McKenna Gardner. 14 on the shot clock. Kyra Stewart, a redshirt sophomore out of San Clemente, California, gonna check in for Simon Frazier. Give Grace Killens a break. Wasatsky can't get it to go on the left side. Offensive woes continue for SFU. Coronado from the left side, coast to coast. She gets it to go. 12 to two Wildcat run. She's having flashbacks at the first game. Yeah, we, we saw a very close start to that Anchorage Seattle Pacific game and then the Seawolves. Started to open things up in the second quarter. The third quarter is where they really took off and put that one away. Alaska Anchorage ended up winning 79-57. So the three-seed Seawolves will take on number two Western Washington tomorrow at noon here at Nicholson Arena. We'll have the action for you here on GNAC TV. Then the winner of this one against MSUB, that's going to be a 2-15 start. Well, a bucket there finally ends the drought for SFU. That lasted just about four minutes for the Red Leafs. 29-19 the score. Moving inside, Blodgett leaves it a little bit short. 
Had a lot of work now to do for Simon Frazier. Caught up on the free throw line. Delay has to bail it out. Delay now from the angle. It's a little bit off. One for four from three-point range so far for the Red Leafs. Haven't been taking a lot of shots from the perimeter. Kai's going to try it again herself. Difficult layup. Can't get it to go. She's been taking some tough shots here early on. Lead back to 10 for Central Washington. Right elbow jumper. Gets it off the bank. Kyra Stewart. Still at the 5'7 redshirt sophomore from San Clemente, California. Felt the tempo of this game slowing down a little bit here in these last few minutes. It was out to a blistering pace to start in the first quarter. Both teams settling into their offense a little bit more. Driving from the far side, Kyra Marsh. Six on the afternoon for Marsh. Cutler. There's another bucket for her. Haven't heard from her in a while. Uh, Gemma Cutler now with 10 in the ballgame. That'll lead all scorers as she is the first to double digits for either side. 10 points to go along with three rebounds for the junior forward. Eight to shoot. Shot clock winding down as Kai cuts to her right. Knocked out of bounds. Going to stay here. Four on the shot clock. As we'll see a couple of subs come in for either side. Hunsinger in for the Wildcats. Luke's back in for the Red Leafs. So four on the shot clock. Got to get something off quick. Kai's got it in the corner. Drives baseline, two defenders on her, and they don't realize that the shot clock's going off there. Hunsinger, who just checked into the game, not aware of the situation, so the turnover on the shot clock violation for Central Washington. Never understand that. Now, yeah, if that's a fluid play, you know, if you're not looking at the shot clock, that's one thing. But we have the out-of-bounds play. You know there's four on the clock. You have to get something off. You have to be aware of that situation. And Kai's going to get dinged for the foul underneath. That'll be her first. Now we haven't seen Huerta in a while. She checked out with two fouls a little bit earlier. That might be the end of the first half for Huerta. We might see the last couple minutes from her. We'll see. 319 left here in quarter number two. 31-23. The scores. Killens gets it to go from the right block. Redleaf's doing a good job of chipping away at the deficit. They're only down six. If they can keep it five or less moving into the half, that's a successful comeback. That largest lead, 12 points. It was 29 to 17 just a few minutes ago. Bruce Langford enraged at that call. He's walked all the way down to the corner of the court, hollering his displeasure. Well, once you win your 500th game, I think you can walk wherever you want, right? Here's Kai looking for the high screen. She gets it. Another off-balance layup. She's really trying to force, though. She's got a couple to go, so I can understand wanting to try that shot. But these are low-percentage shots she's taken from the block, despite how close she is to the hoop. Three makes it a one-possession game for SFU. Jumper on the inside. Killen's another one. Seven points for Grace Killens in the first half. She's three of four from the field. Been very efficient so far in eight minutes of play. Simon Fraser making a nice push of it. Really tough start to the second quarter for them. They've turned things around. Three-pointer for Asher Kai. That'll help end that momentum for SFU. She's turned things on here in the second. Three-pointer now by Shelby. That won't go. That would, to get it right back. Seven-point ball game. It's been night and day, the first and second part of the second quarter. Deep three. Kai can't get it to go. 
I hit the previous one in the corner, she was feeling it. Yeah, that's a little heat check there. And that was, what, four or five feet beyond the arc. Yeah. Shot selection from Asher Kai right now. And a little bit suspect. It's been a couple of better options. It's going to be two on Kai. And that's her second. So now Huerta and Kai both with two fouls for Central Washington. But we're down to 96 seconds left in the first half. Not as big of a deal, but you certainly want to be careful here. So Kai's going to take a seat. And we haven't seen Huerta in about five minutes or so as she left with her second foul quite a bit ago. And there's another foul right after being called on Central Washington. This one's going to go on Leishman, who picks up her first. This is an important final 95 seconds of the half for Simon Fraser. They got it down to four, but because of the three, it's back at seven. They need to keep chipping away. Yeah, this could, this could really decide a lot of the outlook for both teams going into the locker room. Step back jumper, rattles around, will not go for Quirk. Coronado to the right. Marsh. Layup will not go so for close. Marsh. Now quick pace coming back the other way. Lukes goes coast to coast with it. Tempo picking back up. We had a little bit of a slow second quarter as things settled in, but Simon Frazier wants to finish with some pace. Five-point ball game. Here's Marsh on the outside. Central Washington eating up some clock. We're going to get a whistle, and it's going to be three in the key. Shelby Blodgett called for the three-second violation. It'll be a turnover and Simon Frazier basketball. Red Leafs can cut it to a one-possession game. 48.9 on the clock. Opportunity for a two-for-one here. Now, if you're Simon Frazier, you move this quickly, go for a quick bucket around, you know, 37, 38 seconds. You got a two-for-one opportunity. We'll see if they try and get one off. Bounce outside. Now drive to the left. That layup good for Armand DeLay. Shot clock does turn off, however, so Wildcats can hold for the final possession of the first half. It's down to a three-point game. Central Washington led by as many as a dozen earlier in this quarter. It's now 34-31. Great drive. Previous shot by DeLay. Great comeback by Simon Fraser here in the back half of the second quarter. Coronado moving to the right, draws the foul. Gets the clock down to four and a half seconds and will be sent to the line. She's fouled by Grace Killens. Coronado taking her first free throws of the game. Central Washington, four of seven at the line so far today. As a team, third in the GNAC in free throw percentage, shooting 74.5% as a team. First one goes back to a 35-31 ball game. Simon Frazier will have a shot for one last shot here as they got a little bit on the clock. Taking it across the timeline, Wasatsky lets it go from the right side. Will not get it to go. And that's the first half in the books. Central Washington had spread their lead out to 12, but Simon Fraser responds late in the second quarter, and it's a two-possession ball game. As we go into the locker room, Wildcats 35, Red Leafs 31. We'll pause, be back with first half analysis here on GNAC TV.
Halftime here at Nicholson Arena. 35-31, Central Washington leading Simon Frazier in our second and final quarterfinal of the day on the GNAC Championships women's side of the tournament bracket. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday afternoon. Pleasure to have you along. Sean Wally, it's been an interesting first half for this one. Uh, very even first quarter. All of a sudden, Central Washington looked to have all of the momentum to start the second. Grew their lead out to 12. Simon Frazier bounces back in those last few minutes of the first half. We've got a four-point ball game, and I really don't know what to think of everything that's happened so far. So many storylines to count on. Stats are very, very even, as the score sort of is a four-point lead for the Wildcats. You look at it on paper, it's hard to imagine the Central had a 12-point lead with 6.05 remaining in the second quarter. The biggest thing for Central, the reason they're able to be up by four, I would point towards three-point shooting. They're four of seven compared to one of five for Simon Fraser. Had a chance to chat with Bruce Langford of Simon Fraser coming out of the locker room and point blank asked him what his message was to the team. I love how simple he keeps things. You know, he's he's been at that school 23 years now. He says, do we want to compete or don't we? It's that simple. Yeah. You're not going to reinvent the wheel in the locker room. Yeah, you just you have to find a way to light a fire under your team if it hasn't been there yet. Uh, you know, it, as we, as we look at this at this first half, you know, there's a lot of things you can point to. Missing Jessica Wasatsky, certainly a big loss for Simon Frazier. On the other side, though, Asher Kai and Sonny Huerta didn't show up for the first quarter, at least offensively speaking. Uh, you know who's really picked up a, a, a lot of the slack so far uh, for Central Washington? Shelby Blodgett, 10 boards in that first half with a couple points as well. Uh, Asher Kai ended up did finishing the first half with 10 points, 4 rebounds. But all of that was coming in the second quarter. Half of her average, even though she didn't score in the first quarter, you're right. But you also have to look at, I mean, doing great things, way more than normal, is Marsh for Central Washington. Six points already, only average is two and a half. Underway here in half number two, Central Washington starting with the basketball quickly. Huerta drives to the left side, can't get it to go. Second chance opportunity, Capri Sims. Gets it down as she now has six points in the game. Perfect from the field so far. Sims now three for three on her field goals. Six point advantage for Central Washington. Pass just over the top of Huerta. Sticks through the legs of Dulé and that's gonna be a turnover. A little bit awkward as didn't really hit Huerta, but just came perfectly through her arms that Delay thought it was going to be deflected, something, and she was just surprised when it got to her. The field goal was good yeah. going through Huerta's <laughs> arms. She was she was ready for it, but uh, Delay just, it's such an odd, I mean, I'd be surprised too with the way that basketball came to her. Back to back for Capri Sims underneath. 4 nothing run to start the quarter for the Wildcats. Eight-point advantage, Central Washington. Winner on to face number one, Montana State Billings. As that is a team to be reckoned with. They have lost twice to GNAC teams all season long. And one of these two is going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Yellow Jackets in the semis in just 24 hours. Yellow Jackets taking home so many end-of-season awards. Oh, yeah, you look at the top of that list, MSUB, MSUB. They get Cole Bad Bear winning player of the year, head coach Kevin Wooden, coach of the year. The list goes on. 39-31 score. Stuck on the elbow is Killens. She'll get it back. Goes baseline. Late pass for Cutler, deflected away. And the traveling call. That's going to go against Rachel Lukes, who gets get, who gets called for steps. Turnover number nine for Simon Frazier. Red Leafs been one of the best offensive teams in the conference this year averaging a little over 71 points been tough finding it here today however 
They're well below their pace for their season average. They're just at 31 points with eight minutes left in the third. Wildcats with the inbound from in front of their own bench. Looking to expand on an eight point lead. Kai had a big second quarter underneath. And Sims gonna be sent to the line. She is fouled. Capri Sims, we've been calling her name quite a bit here to start the third. Looked like a lot of ball from where we're sitting, but no argument from Bruce Langford. So, you know, a lot of times it can happen on the follow through when you're getting the block from behind like that. Clean on the block, but maybe you catch their back following through, and the officials will be quick to blow the whistle for that. First free throw is down for Sims. All of a sudden, she's got nine. And a make here will tie her for. Game high in scoring. She gets the double figures. Second Wildcat to do so. Now three players at 10 points. Cutler for SFU and Kai and Sims for Central Washington. Whistle on the far side. That's going against Kai. That's going to be her third. She picks it up early in the third quarter. So she will exit. And Kira Marsh back into the ball game. Simon Fraser still yet to score here in the third quarter. Be really interesting to see if Huerta picks up an early third foul. Because her and Kai did miss a good chunk of the second quarter with those two early fouls. Two We're going the other steps. way. Yeah, there's another travel. Second time SFU's been called for it here in the quarter. That's less than two and a half minutes old. Double digit lead again. A bucket here will tie their largest lead for the Wildcats. Coronado handling. Gets the switch. Back to the outside. Sims thought about it. Blodgett gets double teamed. Now in the corner, but a timeout called first as Central Washington will burn their first timeout. 7.20 left in the third quarter. We step aside as it is a 41-31 Central Washington lead here on GNAC TV. Ten-point lead for the Wildcats, 41-31 with 7.20 left in quarter number three. Corner three to get things started out of the timeout for Sims. A little bit of a heat check there. She's been hot to start this third quarter. If you're Simon Fraser out of a timeout, how do you leave somebody that wide open? I'm sure Bruce Langford is asking himself the same thing. He was out past half court at that timeout. Had to be walked back to the coach's box by one of the officials. Red Leafs get a little bit back there. It's now an eight-point ball game. Only took three minutes for them to score here in this third quarter. Very similar to that start to the second quarter. It was a little bit quiet, but then picked up. Huerta can't get it to go. And Sonny Huerta stuck at five points. She's one for 12 now from the field with that miss. Ouch. Not going to get it done most of the time for the Wildcats. Cutting underneath. Step back by delay. Will not go. Blodgett's there for the board. Central Washington, two years removed 
from their lone GNAC postseason title. Looks like we're going to get an arm up top. That's Blodgett that picks up the foul. Well, when you're powered by Samantha Bowman, one of the best to ever do it at the forward position in women's basketball, it's quite the team Coach Th Richardson Thornley had. Bowman named tournament MVP that year that the Wildcats shipped it. And certainly, certainly leaves very large shoes to fill on this Wildcat squad. Angle three, Smith doesn't get it to go. Wildcats shooting not great here, middle part of this third quarter. Wasatsky, angle layup, awkward spot, and we're going to see an offensive foul called. Simon Fraser bench is up and loving it as SFU will get it underneath their own hoop. Foul on Coronado. So Simon Frazier with an inbound underneath their own basket. And that's exactly the kind of thing they need right now. A couple of turnovers. Not only that, but a turn them into buckets. Angle three. Cutler won't go. Offensive rebound for Shelby. Second chance opportunity for SFU. Cutting to a right little 14 footer by Gardner. She'll get it to go. First time we have called McKenna Gardner's name in the second half. She's got eight. 41-35 to score, back to a two-possession game. That one knocked away. Wasatsky got a hand on it as Coronado tried to go to her right. Red, Red Leafs hanging around. They need to decide if they're going to make that charge, come all the way back. Been down 12, been down 10 in this half. Huerta moving into the paint. Barrels through Gardner, and we do get the whistle. But they're going to call it a block. So McKenna Gardner is bowled through by Huerta, but she is called for blocking. Second foul on Gardner. So an inbound with 20 on the shot clock for Central. They get it up top. Marsh moving to her left. Ill-advised she... pass, lots of red in her, in her way. Transition jumper, that'll go for Wisotsky. And Sophia Wisotsky, just her second field goal she's made, she's got four points. It's a beautiful jumper by Wisotsky. Before that shot, she was one for 11 from the field. Angle three won't go. So interesting, you know, those those names that we've called on for offense all year. Wisotsky for Simon Frazier, Huerta for Central. Really having some trouble getting buckets to go, but they're taking their share of shots so far. Loose ball on the ground, finally picked up by Sims. Central has the numbers, they want to push it the other way. Sims off to Smith and steps again. To the delight of the Simon Fraser bench, and we're on their end of the floor, so we hear and see a lot of the things that they're doing and saying is coaches want to talk things over. We're going to send it into the timeout. 419 remaining in quarter number three. Central Washington having trouble getting rid of Simon Fraser. 4137 here on GNAC TV.
Central Washington has led by double figures in both the second and the third quarters. You had Simon Frazier refusing to go away. They've got it back down to a four-point game. 41-37 Wildcats lead, but Red Leafs with the basketball. Under five minutes remaining here in the third. Cutting to right side of the paint. Wasatsky can't get it to go. Offensive rebound, Cutler. Cutler's been doing great things on both ends of the floor, getting rewarded there. Emma Cutler had a good start to the game. They're running the offense through her in transition. So far, that's turned into 12 points for her. And we're going to the line here. Shooting foul coming. Wasatsky called for the foul, and she was just standing there, and Bruce Langford can't believe the call. That's number five on Simon Frazier, so it's bonus the rest of the way in the third for Central. It's going to be Shelby Blodgett at the line to shoot a pair for the Wildcats. Blodgett, two points. This is her first trip to the line today. Here's the big thing, though. Ten rebounds in half number one for Blodgett. Just one so far in the second. Rebounding margin, despite... Blodgett's huge game on the board so far leans in favor of Simon Frazier, if you can believe that. 29-24 the advantage for the Red Leafs. This is how games in this championship tournament should be. Close, tight, within range. The first one got away from Seattle Pacific, unfortunately. We get a whistle, a little extracurricular activity. I think that was Cutler and Blodgett who went to the floor. That foul going on Coronado huh. of Central Washington. So it's going to stay Simon Frazier basketball. And perhaps a little bit of intensity, a little physicality that we haven't seen yet in this game building. Jump shot, Wasatsky gets it to go. You know, that's two in a row from Wisotsky from mid-range, and that's one thing after her first jumper, Coach Langford turned to me and said, that's another thing, shoot the mid-range. Yeah, pull up on both of them as well. Moving in transition and gets it to go from that 15, 17 foot range. Corner, Capri Sims gets it to go. She's had a good start to this third quarter. 13 for Sims. 46-41, Wildcats leading from the free throw line. That's Merlane Shelby as we go back and forth. Clearly, Coach Langford and his shoot the mid-range is getting to his team. Coronado slowing things down in the tempo up top. They start to weave with Huerta now taking it to the left side. Huerta's been cold so far, gets blocked. Lukes is all over, now she comes in transition the other way. Off to Wisotsky, the layup won't go. Oh, that would've been a big bucket for the Red Leafs if that falls. Coach Langford can just get half of a smirk out at that miss. What a treat this second quarter final has been. Huerta trying to get something going, she misses again. One for 14 now for the first team all-conference guard. Angle three won't go for Shelby. So it remains a three-point ball game. That three a good look, but almost a little too early. Didn't have any numbers back for rebounding. And no need to push things right now. They, they got up to such a hot tempo earlier in this game. Seven to shoot. Here's Huerta. Tries a long two, she will get this one to go. She's now got seven, and just her second field goal to go. 48-43 Wildcats. Trying to get it done in front of their home crowd. Driving baseline, Gardner. A nice idea, looking for the cutting Cutler. It gets tossed out of bounds for the turnover. They were on different pages. If you're Cutler, you're coming on that right block. you got to be expecting the ball there. I think she was just going to a different spot than Gardner was expecting her to. Now, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe an issue with substitutions, but 
Oh, we're going to stay Simon Frazier basketball here. So they're going to say last touch by Central Washington. And then I think we're going to get an illegal screen here. No, no, it's going to be the block. Yeah. Kira Marsh goes bulldozing her way through delay and picks up a foul as a result. Simon Frazier trailing by five, driving the hoop. Lukes gets fouled, she's gonna go to the line. Marsh picks up another, so that's two quick fouls on Marsh. Those are her first two of the game though, so no trouble there. Red leaves the chance again to get it to a one possession game. They've been down 12 in the first half, 10 here in the second, and need to get it done at the charity stripe. Rachel Lukes can't get her first to go. Comes into this game making just her 18th start of the season. Came off the bench for a dozen for SFU. She's mixed time between the starting rotation and as a sixth player on. Huerta slowing things down. We're moving back out. Remains a five-point Wildcats lead. Minute left in the third. Layup will not go. Offensive board and second chance. Good for Capri Sims. Sims with 15 on the afternoon. And how about this third quarter for Capri Sims? Wisotsky called for traveling again. That's got to be the fifth or sixth traveling violation we've had in the third quarter. You can see her turn and mouth how. She didn't understand the call, but traveling nonetheless. Her referee thinking that that pivot foot got dragged when she made that jump stop. Seven point ball game. SFU been playing from behind for most of this afternoon, but they've managed to keep it close. Who else? Capri Sims again, make it 17. Lead back out to nine, shot clock turned off. Simon Frazier will have the last shot of the third quarter if they want it. Wasatsky will drive through the double team. Gets it to go, count the bucket. She'll head to the line, Sophia Wisotsky. With a free throw can make this a six point ball game. Wisotsky says, travel this. <laughs> Referees. It was a good thing to have a little chip on your shoulder as long as you use the energy properly and she, she did just that. You know, we, there's just uh, one foul difference in total between these two teams. But so far, Central Washington's taken 13 free throws. Only six on the other side for SFU. At the buzzer. Huerta gets a rare field goal from Hurd in the third quarter. And it's back out to an eight-point ball game. So we head to quarter number four. Still anyone's game, but Central Washington in control. 54-46 here on GNAC TV. Eight-point ball game, Central Washington 
has led for most of this game, but has not been able to put the nail in the coffin. 54-46, Wildcats leading, going to the fourth. Simon Frazier basketball to start the quarter. They need to make a bit of a run here. They've trailed by as many as 12. They've led by four, but that has been since midway in the first quarter. Going to stay here, 11 on the shot clock, as that was last touched by Central. We have our first semifinal set, Alaska Anchorage, Western Washington. Winner of this goes on to face MSUB. Here's Wisotsky at the top. Driving right side. Knocked out of bounds. Not, how is that not a foul? And she Wasowski wants to know the same thing. A lot of contact there and out of bounds the call. Surprising. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Capri Sims for Central Washington, 17 points, leading all scorers. If you would have told us that at the beginning of the game, that it's not Huerta, that it's not Kai, would you think Central would be winning? Absolutely not. Sims averaging 9.5 points a game this season. Almost double that already going into the fourth. Turnover here, Huerta in transition. Just has to be Wasatsky. Can't get the layup to go. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Sims. Very smart defense by Wasatsky. Not to foul, but still affect the shot enough that Huerta got the miss. Went a little bit too strong with it. Can't get it to fall. And today's just hasn't been Huerta's day. Three for 17. That still has turned into nine points, but the efficiency has not been there for no rebounds. Assist and a steal for Huerta. Her line right now. Foul is going to be on Annalie Coronado. That's third her third. Foul. So three fouls for Kai and three for Coronado. Baseline jumper, that's Cutler. That won't go. Would have liked to see Killens take that shot from the left side and she passed up on it. Now, we really didn't call Asher Kai's name in that third quarter. Got that third foul early. Missed a lot of the quarter. Reverse blocked by Cutler. Offensive board belongs to Sims. And then a whistle underneath. Huerta and Kai combined 7 for 27. And yet the Wildcats are up 8. As a team, they've managed to hold it together for a 40% field goal percentage. So at this point, Simon Frazier actually shooting just a tad better from the field than Central. Corner three, that's going to go. That's Coronado that gets the three, her second of the game. She's two for two from deep. You can't leave shooters that wide open. Gardner wants to get it right back. She can't get her three down. Offensive board, and now Wasatsky. That one no good, and Huerta finally grabs his go the other way. Even though they're trailing, Simon Fraser should leave the three-pointer alone. They're now one of eight. And we saw the same kind of thing in that Seattle Pacific Alaska Anchorage game. You know, just historically on the season, Seattle Pacific not a very good three-point shooting team, but they still take the shot despite shooting less than 30% from deep. And you just wonder at some point, when do we start trying to play inside? Foul going to be called as Coronado draws it. It's Wisotsky that picks up her third. Coronado looks like she might have dinged up her knee on that play. She steps aside, hobbling to the bench. Nine point, make it 11 point lead actually for the Wildcats. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this game. Central Washington looking to return to the GNAC semifinals. Rolls out of bounds, gonna be Simon Frazier basketball. Well, looking forward to the rest of this afternoon. After this ball game, we're going to get a small break. Then we're coming back at 5.15 to start the men's action. Number three, St. Martin's takes on number six, Anchorage. Then a 7.30 tip-off scheduled for number four, Central Washington. Number five, Seattle Pacific. A lot of basketball to come your way still on this Thursday afternoon from Ellensburg, Washington. Angle three, Cutler. Can't get it to go. One of nine for the game from beyond the arc. And Cutler has now taken three of those. She has yet to hit a three-pointer. Kai. 
Off to Huerta, loose ball. Huerta's able to get it back. Gardner almost was able to nick that one away. Shot clock down to 10. Huerta in the paint, rattles around and she gets it to go. She's now up to 11 on the game. Nice jumper with the left hand. That's now the largest lead of the game for Central Washington as they've gotten it to 13. Rebound picked up by Kai and she is going to immediately be fouled by Shelby. Who gets hit with her second. And that will take us into the timeout. 6.33 left to play in this one. Central now with their largest lead yet at 13. 59-46 a score here on GNAC TV. Six and a half left to go in the second quarterfinal of the day from the women's 2024 GNAC Championship. Central Washington leads Simon Frazier 59-46. Wildcats with the basketball coming out of the timeout, looking to expand on what's already their largest lead of the game. They're getting a huge second half out of Capri Sims, who's now got 17 on seven for 10 shooting. She's a rebound away from a double-double. You were talking about the evening processions here inside Nicholson Arena. Is that three is short. Back come the Red Leafs. We expect a packed house for the men's Wildcat game tonight. Deep three from Killens won't go. Central moving in transition coming the other way. They slow things down. They're happy to eat up some clock at this point. They can take you know, 20 seconds out of these possessions, get a few buckets, and really eat away at this fourth quarter. Coach Langford and the Red Leafs need to find a way to get back in this game and quick. Only 5.54 left. They're down 13. SFU's only led for two minutes and six seconds of this game. Yeah, that first quarter, you know, we've, we've seen very similar storylines as far as how the lead has gone in these first two games. Seattle Pacific, Anchorage played fairly closer that first quarter. Then the Seawolves just started to pull away. Kind of the same story here for Central Washington. Simon Fraser stuck with them, but now it's out to a 13-point lead. Wildcats looking for more as Kai can't get her mid-range jumper to go. Here's DeLay. Wasatsky. Looking to get something going. A little bit too strong on her floater. Huerta picks up her second rebound of the game. Yeah, Wildcats really slowing down that tempo. I think they want to be taking shots. At least 15 seconds into these shot clocks. Knocked out of bounds. It's going to be Simon Fraser basketball, looks like. Wildcats... 50% from behind the line, the three-point line. Simon Fraser, one of ten. That's, that's the story right there. Yep, that is that is the score differential right now. Rebounds are even. Fouls are even. Wasatsky just behind the arc. Let's an off-balance three go. Shot selection starting to go a little bit as it's starting to get 
into desperation time, perhaps, for Simon Frazier. I mean, they really don't need to get to that point. There's enough time to make up a 13-point deficit. You need to get some stops, and you need to get some buckets, but that shot selection should not be in the repertoire yet. Think back to the third quarter when they got within three, within four, within five. What were they doing? It was the mid-range jumpers. It was the scrappy give-and-go, the plays in the paint that worked. But we're going to see a coach timeout on the floor. 4.44 left in this one. Central trying to put a wrap and stamp their ticket to the quarterfinal. 59-46 a score here on GNAC TV. Less than five minutes remaining in the ball game. Wildcats trying to put this one to bed. 59-46 their lead over Simon Frazier. Asher Kai and getting a ton of help from the rest of her team offensively here today. Capri Sims leading all scorers with 17 so far. As it's now a 15-point ball game. Wildcats expanding their largest lead. Huerta now with 13. It was a slow start for Sonny Huerta, the first team all-conference guard. The thing's starting to settle in for her. Yeah, there's going to be a travel. It's a couple of steps in the paint from Wisotsky. That one looked pretty cut and dry, although a little bit of uh, protest from the Simon Fraser bench. Under four minutes remain. Marsh moving on the outside. And this is the name of the game now for the Wildcats. Just continue to weave and an offensive foul called on the screen. That's Blodgett. Fourth for her. Oh no, Car Coronado picks up the foul, not Blodgett. Simon Fraser needs any advantage they can get in the offensive foul there. Chance to get some points on the board and cut into this deficit. Simon Frazier really going to have to utilize quick shots. Can't afford to get too deep into their shot clocks. Good defense here from the Wildcats. Dessa View has not found an opening yet. I mean, that's just too much time without a shot there. Shot clock got down under 10 there. No shot and then a turnover. I think I think six, seven seconds. You got to be taking a shot at this point. And that pass, not a bad idea. Just way too high. 61-46, mm -hmm. our score. Kai holding on the outside. Offense slowing down a little bit here in the fourth quarter as it's really Five just become a, gan uh, become a game of eating up clock, and they do get the bucket. That's exactly what the Wildcats want to do. You get a bucket to go with three left on the shot clock, that's the ball game it's right there. It's a double there. win. Yeah. Yeah, they've got so it up to 17. And advancing your lead. 240 left. Shelby gets the jumper. For Central Washington. This would be win number 19 on the season. Gets them back on the winning side of things after losing their regular season finale. They've just got to weather another two minutes to stamp their ticket to the GNAC Championship semifinals. A little baseline shot from Puerta. All of a sudden, she's got 17. 17. She's had a huge second half to pace the Wildcats. And for Simon Fraser, just a few seniors playing in their final game. Now we'll see if the foul was underneath after the shot. I think it was as Gardner got a push in the back. And 
No, it's going to be on the shot. So that'll send Gemma Cutler to the line. Yes. Big round of applause for the Central Washington student section. That's been a fun injection into the atmosphere of this game here this afternoon. Great showing from the Central students. They've got time to regroup and come back for the 7.30 matchup when the Wildcat men take the floor. Cutler gets them both to go. She's got 14 on the game now to lead the Red Leafs in scoring. And it looks like her afternoon will be over. She finishes with 14 and 8, as well as a block in 32 minutes. Grace Killens and Jessica Wysotsky, the two seniors on the Red Leafs. Another illegal screen going to be called. Looks like this time it's on Riley Leishman. We've seen limited time in this game. She just checked back in. Yeah, and Central unloading the bench, getting some chances here. Aaliyah Finch gets in. Malia Smith, who's seen limited time, back on the floor as well. That foul is going to go on Smith. Jordan Webb, assistant coach on the bench for Simon Fraser, giving the officials an earful. I'm not sure what it was about, but he's saying 35 minutes. I, I'm not sure the context there, but he's upset about something. It's never fun when your season comes to an end. No. No, it is not. No matter the circumstances that got you there. 14-point ball game with a minute and a half left. Run out the clock time for Central Washington to ice this. You know, we keep looking up and down the stat sheet and look for the big difference. Outside of three-pointers, this has been a pretty even ball game. Absolutely. It's almost a head-scratcher as to how it's a 14-point game. Yeah. Deep three. Angle from Coronado will not go. SFU trying to move quickly the other way. A find underneath. Gill can't get her layup down. We just saw Sonia check into the game for SFU. Expect a little more roar from the Wildcat crowd in the final 30 seconds here. The Central Washington and that's not letting it sink in just yet as they still have one more possession that they're going to have to get through. That three won't go for Coronado. Ted Aweo moves quickly the other way. And it looks like we're getting a timeout here to reset for subs. So Bruce Langford wanted to get Ryland Quirk into the game quickly, so he calls a timeout with 21 seconds left. Shot clock's turned off, so next time the Central Washington gets possession, they're going to be able to put this one to bed. First, a foul underneath. It looks like that's going to be called on Hunsinger. Olivia Hunsinger, freshman out of Missoula, Montana, picks up the foul and sends Ted Aweo to the line. Things don't get any easier for Central Washington. Waiting for them. Top ranked Montana State Billings. And it's just going to be more and more difficult here on out. It's the nature of the game. Under 10 seconds left. Wildcats are going to let this run out. 65-51 is going to be the final score as number four seeded Wildcats defeat the number five seeded Red Leafs. They have punched their tickets. They're heading to the semifinals and they've got the number one Yellow Jackets tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. Huerta and Sims lead the Wildcats with 17 points apiece. Cutler has 14 on the other side for the Red Leafs. Simon Frazier ends their season with a 17 and 14 overall record. 
as they will be going home early in this one. Sean Wally, final thoughts as we wrap up the women's session here today. As we see tears from Grace Killens knowing she has played her final college basketball game along with Jessica Wysotsky. Just came down to the shooting from beyond the arc. Central Washington advances. Simon Fraser's season is done. It's one game. Winner go home. Our semifinals are set. Western Washington and Alaska Anchorage and Central Washington and Montana State Billings. Those are the four remaining on the women's side. Men are up next. We will take a pause. We're going to be back in about an hour and 15 minutes, at which time we will be bringing you number three, St. Martins, and number six, Alaska Anchorage for our first GNAC men's basketball game of the day. Looking forward to joining you again at 515 for tip-off back here at Nicholson Arena. Until then, thanks for joining us here on GNAC TV.